five most critical transits which happen every month or every year or every two, two and a half years. You guessed it right. <laughs> See, transits are like a person who has come to deliver you something. But what will be delivered is dependent on your Mahatasha and Antardasha. Do not forget that transits cannot give you things if you do not have it in your dashas, okay? So, for example, for a particular ascendant, suppose Jupiter is transiting the 10th. There are so many people, one twelfth of the people will be having a particular ascendant, right? The same ascendant. So, now, something will happen in the person's profession. But what is the extent? Will the person get a new job or get a promotion or become a millionaire or a multimillionaire or a billionaire? That will be dependent on the dasha. So that is something which you cannot understand just by reading transits, okay? But once you have seen your Mahadasha and Antardasha, now it's time to see transits because they will tell you how the focus areas are kind of changing and in which areas of your life you are going to get the results, okay? Depending on the dasha, of course. So don't think, okay, Jupiter has transited uh, seventh house for this particular ascendant, so marriage will happen. Marriage can happen, provided your dasha agrees. Now, the first, the first, 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 and Maybe the most ignore of all transits is the transit of Mercury. So please do not forget to see the transit of Mercury in your chart, depending on your Lagna, your rising sign, your ascendant, not moon sign, only ascendant. Because when you see uh, the transit of Mercury, what you actually are doing is you are seeing where your brain is moving, where because Mercury shows your intellect, your intelligence. So where is your intellect moving, okay? So that Mercury uh, will tell you. So for example, if Mercury is transiting your 10th house, you will become very conscious about what's going on in your profession. How can you improve your profession? How can you, yeah, how can you get more connections? You know, how can you uh, do something better? How can you improve intellectually in your profession? How can you become more smart in your profession? How can you become more knowledgeable? How can you become more valuable? So therefore, if you do not use Mercury's transit thinking, oh, it's just, you know, yeah, whenever there's retrograde, we need to use it. And not otherwise, then uh, you're making big blunders because you will, you will not able to understand how your mind is fluctuating. Very, very, very important, okay? And as always, if you are new, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you enjoy this content. And personalized consultations through my website down below. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And yes, uh, re-announcement regarding my India trip. So I will be in New Delhi from 20, oops, 20. Yes, I'll be available from 25th of November till 2nd December. And in Guwahati, I'll be available from 10th of December to 10th of January for consultations. All right. So if you want me, uh, to read your chart and meet me personally, then please send an email at exoticastrology at the rate gmail.com and my team will respond to you at the earliest. All right. Now, the second transit, which is very, very, very important, is the transit of Mars. See, why Mars? Because Mars is the original Lagna Lord. Yes, he's the original Lagmesh because. In your Kalpurush Kundli, Aries is the first house. And what happens when the Lagnesh gets activated? It's a very important event in your life, right? Through Dasha or through transit. So, Mars will tell you where you are focusing your energies actively. So, Mars will tell you. See, the Lagnesh will tell you where you are focusing. So, suppose Mars in transit is transiting your first house. So you will put a lot of energy and efforts, you know, in your uh, physique, you know, to uh, reduce your weight or whatever for, for, for any, any reason that could be, okay? So therefore, if you really want to utilize a particular transit, then please see where Mars is transiting because when you see where Mars is transiting, you know where you can go all in, all out, right? So therefore, 
very important to see Mars because Mars will tell you where you would like to focus. So, for example, if Mars is transiting your uh, third house, you will become very aggressive in your communication. Not that you will communicate uh, aggressively, but you will be very focused and you will want to communicate properly. Okay. Can be a bit aggressive sometimes or in a sense that you are communicating too much. Okay. You are oversharing. So, therefore, if you have Mars transiting in a particular house, you know that the fire is there, the enthusiasm, the eagerness and the desire to make a change is there and independence is there. So please check Mars and do not forget Mars and Mercury. Very, very, very important. Okay. The number three is the transit of the sun. The transit of the sun will tell you some very interesting things. So for example, if sun is transiting your 10th house, you can get some name and fame in that area of life. That's the job of the sun, to show light. What does this mean? It means you can do something big in your profession or you can take up some strong decisions or some leadership role in that. And because of that, you may uh, gain some name fame. You know, Because when you make a strong, resolute, uh, determined uh, decision, then you kind of become famous. Like Bhishma Pitama took the vow that I will uh, never marry, right? And whoever is in the throne of Hastinapur, I will see my father's image in that person and serve the throne. So this was his vow. And when he took this vow, the devotas started showering flowers and they said, Bhishma, 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 which means the one who has taken this grave vow, like grand vow. It's like, you know, uh, it's like, it's beyond imagination, right? <laughs> because people, they take vows sometimes for their children. But Bhishma, uh, Devrat, as his name was before becoming Bhishma, he was the only one, probably, perhaps, <laughs> who had taken vow for his father. A very exemplary personality. One of the 12 Mahajans also. So, Wherever sun transits, you can take some vow. Okay, I will make a change in that area of life. And then you you also become like Bhishma, 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 Bhishma. <laughs> you don't have to take a vow of celibacy, but yeah, you know, who knows what life throws at you, right, sometimes. <laughs> All right, so sun shows name and fame. Therefore, if sun transits the Lagna or the 10th or the 11th or the 5th, these four houses, you can get name and fame because of your career or because of some resolute determination that you have. Then, number four is Jupiter because wherever Jupiter transits, there will be auspiciousness in general. There will be growth in that area. There will be expansion in that area. Now, for example, if suppose Jupiter transits your second house, what will you grow? Second house has, you know, you might get married, you might have children, you might uh, focus on your uh, spouse or children, you might, you know, buy a new house at times, you know, or somebody in a family might buy a new car, something or the other could happen. But if the Dasha is indicating seventh house and you are unmarried, you are 25 plus, Deshkal Patra, time, place, circumstances, then you might get married. If you are married and yeah, around 25, 28 plus and your Jupiter transit second and your Dasha is indicating 5th house or 11th house, 9th house, then you might have children. Okay. So this is how you will know the same second house, which aspect of it will get activated. That can only be known through the Dasha. So now once when you have seen this, what happens is Jupiter can tell you some new event or something new can happen in that life which you have kind of not experienced before or maybe it does not happen very frequently like for example uh, getting married uh, ideally it's supposed to happen only once but even if it happens multiple times you won't find anybody who has married like you know a hundred times maybe four or five maximum and then people give up okay so and children you know you cannot have like a hundred children okay but in general, I mean, you have like, you know, one or two or three or four or at the max five, okay, for most of the people with some ex exceptions, of course. So therefore, uh, Jupiter will tell you uh, like God's blessings that will, uh, we which blessings of God will manifest in your life. So therefore, 
wherever Jupiter transits, you will feel that that area of life is a bit better than previous year. Okay, because Jupiter transits for around 12 months. So you feel, oh yeah, I got something in this area of life which I did not get before. But again, the, the extent and the quantity and especially the quality will depend on the dashas. Okay, so don't ignore dashas. And last but not the least, the transit of Saturn, very, very, very important. The transit of Saturn will tell you in which houses you have to work hard in life, where you have to do consistent hard work. But will you get the results after that or not? That the Dasha will tell. That Saturn cannot say. Okay, the transit of Saturn cannot say. So, for example, if your Saturn is transiting the 10th house, so it means you'll have to work more. Two times, four times, you have to work hard. Work, 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 work. okay? Uh, but will you become successful at the end? Will you get that promotion? Will you get that pay raise? Will you start your business? Or will you gain more followers in Instagram or YouTube? Or your status will increase? Or will it be better? That only Dashas can say. So if the Dashas are indicating to star houses, then it means you are working, working, working. Like, you know, it's like uh, the trend mill. You are running in the same place. There's no growth, okay? But if Dashas are indicating good things, then uh, there's phenomenal growth in that area of life. So therefore, wherever Saturn is transiting, you have to understand that that area of life will require special attention. And you will have to give that attention. It's not like, oh, there is requirement of attention and I can just do away with it. No, if you, if you don't pay attention, extra attention the house and those traits will not function in your life and you will feel you have lost that part of life so therefore it is imperative that wherever saturn transits in your uh, chart you understand that it will not happen in one go it may require two three four five or even ten attempts to do it so therefore Understand that now I have to work hard and working hard is, that's the only option left. So wherever Saturn sits, there are, there, there are sometimes no two choices, okay. Or even where wherever Saturn transits, there are not more than one choice that is given because the only choice you have is to work hard. That's the only choice, all right. So, I hope you like this video on transits and please let me know which is your favorite transit in the comments and why do you think that transit is most important. It could be among these five or some other transit also, alright? God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him. New Delhi dates, 25th of November to 2nd of December and 10th December to 10th January next year, Guwahati, alright? Exoticastrology at the rate gmail.com for personalized one-to-one -one consultations and if you want an online consultation then exoticastrology at uh, exoticastrology.in the website all right thank you so much don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you are new and see you again take care jay siaram